Hi everybody, and welcome to the second segment of Java Programming. Uh, my name is Professor West, and as I've said before, I create these programs uh, or these videos for two reasons. One is to help people with some of the more difficult concepts, and two is to help people get started when they're um, trying to learn some of these concepts and you want to get started off on the right foot. So this segment will be dealing with um, variables as well as input and output. So I still have my one up from last time here, my Hello World program from the first segment, um, where we did a simple output statement using these two lines. We just outputted the words Hello World with exclamation points, and then the words see you can print whatever you want. And then we ran it, and the output was down here below. Now we're going to change it up a little bit, and we're going to start talking about variables. Let me explain what a variable is before we do anything else. Do you remember in like fourth grade when they would say something like x equals 4 plus 2? And they would say, what's x? And you go, oh, okay, 4 plus 2 is 6, so x equals 6. And then the next line might have x equals 5 plus 9. And you say, oh, 5 plus 9 is 14, so x is 14. x is a variable. X simply, that simply means that it has the ability to change its value depending on how you're using it. In programming, once we do this, this is called an assignment. So it takes whatever's on the right side, 5 plus 9, which is 14. Let me get rid of this. 5 plus 9 is 14. The equals would have it assign, 14 would be assigned to the x. So anytime I use x, it would represent the value of 14 until I change it. At some point, I would do something different with x and maybe give it a different value, and then it would hold that value. That's all a variable is, guys. So to keep it short, there's a number of different kinds of variables that you can use. Um, the main ones that we're going to talk about are integers, int, which is a whole number. And we're going to talk about doubles, um, which doubles um, have the ability to have decimal places. And... Um, like, for example, a whole number would be like 1 or 5 or 7, and the decimal place would be like, you know, 2.4 or 5.689 or something like that. And we're going to talk about floats, which also has the ability to have decimal places. And we're going to talk about something called a char, which is short for character, which has the ability to represent one letter or symbol like the letter A or the, the, the ampersand or the semicolon, you know, whatever we want. We're going to talk about a Boolean variable. B-O-O-L-E-A-N, Boolean, which um, basically that's a yes-no statement. It's either true or false, and it, there's no in-between. It's, it's a zero or one. It's a true or false. It's like a light that's either on or it's off. You know, if it's on even a little bit, it's on. You know, there's no in-between. So, and last but not least, we're going to talk about something called a string, which is just a bunch of characters together, like basically words or sentences. So, um, don't worry about all that right now. Let's just use a few of them and, and have some fun with it. So, I'm going to create, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few variables. INT... Um, let's see, I'm going to keep it simple, I'm going to say X, and uh, let's say Y and Z. Notice I have them separated by commas. Um, you don't have to do more than one per line, I could have just as easily, I could have said INT X, INT Y, and INT Z. Um, it doesn't matter. If you're doing different types, you have to do them on different lines. You can't do multiple types. And for right now, notice each one has a tiny little gray squiggly line under it. All that's telling me is that at this point in the program, I've created these variables, but I haven't used them yet. So that's to perfectly fine. Um, what, what we need to know, or what I need you to know also is, um, 
X, Y, and Z are terrible names for variables because they're not descriptive at all. So when you actually start doing your programs, you'll want to have more descriptive names, which we'll get into in just a moment. But I just wanted to point that out real quick. And uh, let's go ahead and do one. Let's say system.out.println. Um, please enter your age. Why not? And then I'm going to come to the next line, and I'm going to say x equals, remember when, before when I was talking about you assign whatever's on this side to this side. Well, in this case, I'm going to say x equals input dot next int. Now, it gave me a squiggly line under input because I haven't actually done my input yet. So before I can do that, before I can use it, I have to do a couple of other things. So what do I have to do? First, I have to come up and uh, here by my class, or by my package rather, at the top, I have to use an import statement. I M P O R T, and I'm going to import something called Java dot util dot notice notice these boxes that are coming up here inside the java folder let me go back inside the java folder there's a whole bunch of things that you could import the last one was the util inside the util that stands for utilities i want one called scanner so notice my type in s it went right to the s's I can put it on there and I can hit the enter key or I can double click on it like I did a minute ago and put a semicolon now I'm gonna add something else here we call it a comment when I do slash slash I'm telling the computer ignore everything else on this line after this I can put whatever I want and the computer will completely ignore it. This is only for me or for any other programmer that uses my program. Okay? So I'm saying, I'm going to remind myself that the import statements long inside the package. So this is I add this so that later when I add more import statements because it's it can be hard to remember where to put everything sometimes I remember that it goes after the package now in my main function I have to have something else here I have to say scanner which is what I created here and then I give it a name I'm gonna use input equals new scanner system dot in I know this is a lot to remember it but don't worry we'll get to it so what I'm telling it now is I'm creating a variable called input temporarily and what happens is I'm telling it that it's a new scanner which remember I, I just imported the scanner command now the scanner command is a simple command that allows me to have input. This tells the computer, this command tells the computer how to accept what I type on the mouse, on the keyboard rather, how to accept that and allow it to be in, in the program using the system.in, which you don't need to worry about. Again, all this all this does you won't you'll never have to change this this will always be just like this the only part of this whole line that might ever change is the word input and that's because it's a variable name that I just chose to use so now that I have that now I can come down and I can do my um, input statement like I was wanting input dot and notice that now I've got a whole bunch of, of choices that came up those weren't there a moment ago and since these are going to be an integer I want it to do next int 
So what I'm telling the computer here is, I'm saying, please enter your age, and then I'm telling the computer that there's going to be input. It's going to be an integer, which is a whole number. And it's going to assign that to this variable x, which is an integer. Now, this command tells the computer to, to check whatever I type in and make sure it's a whole number. Because sometimes you might accidentally put something else. You might forget what you're putting. There's any number of reasons why you might not have it show up properly. And so, be, but you can't assign it to an integer if it's not an integer. So, you have to check. And then I'm going to do a simple output statement just to test it. System dot out dot print line. And I'm just going to put an X. So what I'm telling it now is to output whatever the value of X is. Let's run it and test it. Please enter your age. Okay. Let's say I'm 25. Oh, now this is another problem. Notice that it entered up here where the cursor was. But right now, I'm down here in the output window, so I had to click down here, and now I can enter 25. And when I hit the enter key, it just outputted 25 again, because that's what I told it to do. And that's it. And then it stopped running. Let's run it again, and I want to show you something else. Please enter your age. Notice these green arrows here. These are the play arrows, um, just like on a... Uh, DVD or whatever just like I've been running the play button here notice that now they're not highlighted but the stop button is this is because the program is currently running and if I wanted to stop it I could just hit the stop button but let's say I enter 30 and hit the button and it comes up and says 30 now that button's grayed out and those buttons are green or colored again so you could use them so let's say I don't want to just output the number Let's say I want to do something like your age is equals quote. Now, if you want to output two things, you have to have a plus sign between them. So now this print line statement is going to output everything in the quotes. When that's finished, it's also, because of the plus sign, going to output the value of x. Let's try that and see what happens. Please enter your age. Um, let's say 21. Oh, your age is 21. That's all there is to this, guys. It's as simple as that. What if I wanted to output it again? Let's say plus quote, thank you for playing. Now I'm going to save it and run this. Enter your age. Um, 54. Enter. Your age is 54. Thank you for playing. Notice the word thank you is right up against the 54. That's because after this X, I have the plus. I do not have a space here. If I had put a space here, then it would have had a space here. But I didn't do that. So, but we're getting a little bit more complex here. You're seeing that there's other things you can do. Now, let me show you something else. What if, instead of putting thank you for playing... What if I would have done system, if I could type, dot out, dot print, line, thank you for playing. This is important because when you run it, what is your age? Let's say I'm 97, getting on up there as, I, as this goes. Your age is 97, thank you for playing. Notice it put these on two different lines. That's because I have print line here. Print line tells it basically to print everything that I tell it to print and then hit the return key or the enter key and move down to the next line. Then the next line of code runs and it moved down to the next line. So as your age is 97, when it got to the end of the line, it was like as if I hit the return key and it came down to the next line. If I had used a print statement instead of a print line, which is also acceptable, then it would not have moved down to the next line after this one. Please enter your age, 45. Your age is 45, thank you for playing. Now we're right back to where we were at a moment ago because I don't have print line anymore. But as you can see, 
that's all there is to this, guys. You'll have to play around with it some in practice, but that's really it. So this is important, though, because this gives us the ability to have various outcomes. Notice each time I typed in a different number, a different number came out because that's what we told it to do. Later, we'll take that and we'll expand on it. Let me show you one other thing real quick. Okay, to save us some time, I just copy and pasted a program that I wrote a few minutes ago. And uh, I'm going to walk you through it real quick, but you can take your time and type it all in. You know, all you got to do is pause this video. I'm assuming you're playing along with me as we go. Um, in this example, I changed the name of my scanner. Instead of input, it's now called scanner with a lowercase s. Um, this is very important. I wanted I did this on purpose so I could point this out to you. In Java, it, Java is very case sensitive, which means a capital word scanner is not the same as the lowercase scanner or any other names. So, scanner in this case is a command to create a, something that allows input and output. Scanner in this case is just my variable name, just like the word input was a minute ago. So, now I'm going to use the scanner command to accept my input, scanner.nextline instead of input.nextline. And uh, I did that because I wanted to use the word input as a variable. So, the next thing that I've done here is, instead of just integers, I've added a few strings. I did so with the keyword string, capitalized. My variable, I called it s1, string s1 equals new string. And then in the quotes, I put please enter the first number. In a moment, I'm going to have an output statement right here, and I'm going to simply say system.out.println s1, and it'll, it'll output, please enter the first number. I could have skipped this and just had system.out.println, please enter the first number, but I wanted to show you that you can do this with strings just as we did a minute ago by hard coding it, which simply means typing in the code instead of using a variable. So this is exactly like what we did just a minute ago. In the other example, we had an output statement that said, please enter your age. Then we had an input statement that uses scanner to get the next line. And uh, the only difference now is I'm going to parse it, which I'll get to in one second. Now, uh, I'll explain that in one second. So then I have a second string command. I use a second string variable. I called it S2. Um, again, that's a terrible name because it's not very descriptive, but for these short programs, that's okay. Um, new string, please enter the second number. And I have the exact same thing happen in here. And then I created a third string, which right now is blank, called S3. And I created an, a string that I called input, which is also blank. For my variables, I created num1, num2, num3, and total. And I set them all equal to zero. This is always a good idea because you never know when something's going to happen in a program and if it's not set to zero to start with, sometimes it'll actually have a value. I created a program one time and my variable I was actually using total got a value from somewhere else and tried to input it and it messed up all my calculations. So this first line, this first set of lines is going to ask you to input a number, then we're going to accept it and then we're going to parse it. Now, earlier, in the earlier example, I didn't use next line. I used next int, which told it to only accept the integer that was being entered and assign it to the variable that was over here. But now I'm using the next line command. So I'm telling it to accept anything, no matter what it is, as input. Then I'm going to tell it to parse it, parse input, which is what's in the parentheses here. And parsing it simply converts it to an integer if it is a whole number. So let me explain why we need to do that. Oh, and then I store it at, to num1. The reason we do that is because the number 3 is different than the character 3. Let me say that again. The number 3 is different then the character 3 and all numbers so the number 15 is different than the character 15 or characters 15 
this is very important that you understand and let me show you why um, if I have a character called 15 or well let's say I have a character called num and I assign it the value of 15 as a string I cannot do any math with that no math at all because it's not a number it's a character it's a string so we have to convert it into a number using this parse command and I know that gets a little confusing but I'll show you why we do it that way in just a few minutes but first let's do this let's just trust me on it for now and then I'll show you in just a few minutes so now I have a variable called total that I told it equals num1 plus num2 remember when we first started doing this I had x equals 5 plus 11 now I'm telling it total equals whatever they entered for the for num1 plus whatever they enter for num2 and then I have it do a simple output line that says output the total is total then I come down and I have this other line here and I did this on purpose where I said s3 this is my string 3 that I created up here that doesn't have a value yet I don't have anything in the string and I said string 3 num1 so let's say you entered 5 and 10 so total would equal 5 plus 10 which would be 15 this would say the total is 15 but here I'm going to it would be saying 5 and then an actual plus and then 10 and an actual equals and then the, the answer and then I output it as a string s3 these these two lines right here will do the same as this line I just wanted to show you that there's two different ways to do it so let me go ahead and run this program now and show you please enter the first number okay let's say let's keep it simple and say 8 please enter the second number 3 the total is 11 that's this line right here did this one just says 8 plus 3 equals 11 that's what this does so notice that here when I outputted it I outputted the string s3 the string s3 now says 8 plus 3 equals 11 because of this line so here's why we do them as strings and as numbers when I came here and I told it total equals num1 plus num2 it automatically added them together and came up with 11 and assigned that to total I didn't want it to add them together here though here I actually wanted to use the the numbers I wanted s3 to say 8 plus 3 equals 11 I didn't want it to just do a calculation here so that's why we do strings versus numbers or versus integers the string will not automatically do the math mathematics now can you think of a time where you would want the user to enter a number but you wouldn't want mathematical calculations performed on that number I can give you a very good example let's say you tell somebody system dot out dot print line quote please enter your phone number so let's say Bob is running this program and it's time to enter his phone number what is he gonna do well he's gonna say you know um, 800 555 dash 2134 now if I accept this as a number if I used you know num1 and I had said num1 equals you know this is an integer this is going to automatically perform math on this so 800 times 555 minus 2134 would be the new number what is that 
the computer would no longer see it as 800-555-2134. Instead, the computer would see it as 441, comma, 866. Is that the same? Absolutely not. That's because this I told it to be an integer, so it solved it. It solved this mathematical equation and came up with this. But if I told it to be a string, it would have simply left it as this. And that's what I wanted. So it's very important anytime you're doing a phone number or social security number or any other item that you do not want mathematical calculations performed on, you have to do them as a string, not as a number. I hope that's clear. But you'll it's something that you're just going to have to practice with. But if you you will probably at some point mess up and accidentally make them a number and you'll be like, why is it coming up with 441866? That's why. It's always a good idea anytime you create a variable like this to go ahead and have an output statement just like we did here. Just a simple little statement to, to output it so you can make sure that it's working the same way you expect. One last thing that I want to mention before we go is I have scanner.close here. Anytime you open the scanner or create a scanner you should close it this keeps there from being memory leaks which is basically where it would just keep a scanner open while the program's running even though it's not using it so the rest of my program would continue it would perform all the other stuff that it needs but I've closed the input for now you can always reopen it if you need to in other places in your program these little programs that we're running right now, everything is going to be in the input statement. But there could be a, you know, 90% of my program might be doing other stuff besides getting input. And in which case, I don't need this open and using my resources. So, anyway, that's it for this segment. I went a little long on the time, I see. And I apologize for that. I'll try to keep it shorter in the next ones, but there's so much information here. As I said, um, you're welcome to copy this program and test it um, I would not use this part if I were you I would actually create a string variable and assign it if you're gonna do it but I'm gonna go ahead and get that out of there right now so that it's not in my program so anyway hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you in the next segment